Hey guys, Murph here for a Throwback Thursday sim racing style. Uh, this we are going back to 1989. It was the year of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Movies like Good Morning Vietnam, Crocodile Dundee, and the greatest Christmas movie ever, Die Hard. As for motorsport, well, it was the year of the clash between Ayrton and Senna. And Prost, the first one, not the send it up the inside without breaking one from the following year. This was the one where they would crash into each other going into the chicane. Uh, NASCAR was won by a Rusty Wallace. And more to the point of this video, the Indy 500 was won by two times world champion Emerson Fittipaldi for Patrick Racing. On a personal note, I was two years old, little whippersnapper, still living in Auckland, New Zealand. And my, it was the year my wife was born, so it's a pretty good year. Now, as for the game itself, you can probably already tell from the thumbnail, the title, or even what's on screen. We're talking about the original racing simulator, the game that started off the simulator revolution. We are talking Indy 500 by Papyrus. Now, a little backstory, Papyrus, they have made some absolute classic games in their time, even a controversial one or two. They did the original IndyCar, IndyCar 2 games from the early 90s. They did NASCAR 1, 2, 3, 4, NASCAR 2002, NASCAR 2003, which is still the best offline AI overall racing experience you can have. The other game, the controversial side that some people won't like, well, that's iRacing. These, the people who made this game, basically, have, this evolved into iRacing. Now, the other side note, they're the same company that made probably the best, the best classic racing game of all time, best historic racing game of all time, and we're talking about Grand Prix Legends, a game that came out in the late 90s that was completely based on the 1967 Formula One season. Now enough about Papyrus, we'll jump ahead to this game. The game itself was an absolute gem. It was, that, it was the first game that gave you even semi-realistic physics. I mean, if you compare it to now, which you can't, but it obviously isn't very realistic. But for the time, when all the other games were hard, were very arcadey, were very basic in the way you drive, this this blew people's minds. This this was this was something else. You had to drive sensibly you didn't drive and massive power slides through corners like all the other games and all that you actually had to drive like a proper race car you had to had to be relatively smooth as i spare left to right there you had to drive relatively smoothly you had to drive with a bit of patience a bit of finesse and most importantly just a bit of patience um, it had a lot of realistic things some things that even a uh, necessity for any oval racing that other games that came out in 2017 don't have. For example, Project Cars 2 over, has a few over racing. Yeah, it's not the bulk of the game, but there is over racing in it. It doesn't have safety cars. Now, safety cars are a huge thing in over racing. A car crashes, a safety car comes out. It's just the way it is. It's a safety thing. Project Cars 2 has a decent amount, decent bit of oval content, has no safety cars. Guess what? This game has safety cars. This game from 1989 has safety cars. There's a lot of other realistic things built in, like your ability to make and change setups, and those setups will affect the car. You put too much front wing on, the car will oversteer, you'll turn into the corner, it will just spin out. You put too much rear wing on, it will just sledge up and you'll run over the wall. And you can, as you can see, you can, as I've already said, you can change the wing angles. You can change what compound tyres you could, you are using, which is realistic to the day. Unlike today's spec tyres, you actually could use different compounds on different corners of the car. And that was in all sorts of racing. That wasn't just in the car. That was Formula One, NASCAR, V8 supercars, Group A touring cars, everything. You can change the tyre pressures. You can change the suspension settings. You can change the camber. You can change the stagger, the difference between the right rear tyre and the left rear tyre. You can even change the gear clusters depending on whether you're running out of revs or not. 
And then there was other things. If you look down in the left corner, bottom left corner, you can actually have in-car adjustments of the weight jacker. Look, the adjustment which shifts the weight in the car. You can even have boost pressure settings. You can see the first dial. I'm going up and down the boost settings and it would actually change the fuel usage. So you had to watch your fuel usage like most modern simulators. Now so plenty of options to, to adjust to affect the car. Now the best part about it, these options really did genuinely affect the car in realistic ways. You add more front downforce, the car would get looser. If you add more rear downforce, it would get tighter. You add too much camber, the car will start understeering and sledging. If you have too low tyre pressures, you won't have enough grip. Too high tyre pressures, you won't have enough grip. Higher tyre pressures meant less roll resistance. That stuff actually affected the car. Pretty bloody good for a game from 1989. It's pretty impressive. Another bit of realism they actually added in being an Indy 500 game, it actually included the unique Indy, Indy 500 format for qualifying. Now it didn't include Bub Day and all that sort of thing, but it included the four lap timed run. So you had to do four laps to set your, set your lap time, not just one flyer, four laps, your total of those four laps is your qualifying time. Saying they probably didn't need to put in like it's a sim it's an early simulator there's you can left a lot of detail out but they didn't they added stuff like that in which is really cool and real impressive now as for my own personal affections of this game well my dad got a computer in the early 90s i probably been five or six at the time and had this game installed and i thought this is cool as a usual as first try and trying to play it i'd crash every single lap like every time I try and do a lap I'd crash, spin out, hit the wall, hit other cars, all that sort of thing. But given a couple of months, I actually got really good at it and then given it six months to a year, I got ridiculously good at it. To the point where I could start in the Penske, I could start dead last in 33rd position and in a 10 lap race, I could pass every car and win it. Now, you may think, hmm, the AI is too easy. Yeah, AI is simple. I mean, a six-year-old, he's gotten older, he does a lot of racing. Be nice and easy for him to win now. I tell you what, I tried maybe 20 races doing that. Best I could manage was fifth. Shows how much I must have played it back in the day that I could get that good that, oh, that I could bloody start last and win. Now, enough of me chatting about the history and the physics and, and my own feelings and memories of the game. How about we do a quick race? So we'll start the race in 7th position where I qualified. We'll dive off into turn 1. Got a good start and cleared those two off the free wide start. We'll get up the inside of that blue and blue purplish red car. And we'll get up inside the white and yellow car. Now one of the things that's a bit weird playing this game is there are no names attached to the cars. I mean I can guess what some of the cars are that red and white car up ahead I will be a Marlboro paint scheme as as the car was that Emerson Fittipaldi drove to win this this Indy 500 um, the yellow car is probably Rick Mears and the yellow Penzo or Penske anyway looks like we're going to a good run on this black and white car we'll go to the inside in turn one we'll use the apron which is actually realistic in those days you used to you be able to use the apron in, in turn one and turn three and four now we make slight contact with the black and white car, hardly affects me, of course with 10 lap race there's no damage to my car, but it takes him out of the race. <laughs> Interesting, um, it's a little design choice. Now as you can see the yellow flag still keeps flashing up in that top right hand corner, that's because they're, they're all crashing into each other right now, like the cars further down the grid are, are getting involved in that spinning car. And you'll see when we get round out off of turn two, these cars crashed everywhere. Now a little note, especially for those who don't know, that the you know why the all ovals, it's turn one and two, and turn three and four, even if it's only actually got two turns. Thanks to Indianapolis, which has four turns. A little fact, that's why we caught for turn 1, turn 2, and turn 3 and 4, even when it's only really 2 turns. Anyway, you see all the cars stopped at the side of the track, they're all the crashed out cars, I think there was about, 
Oh, I think there was about eight of them that were crashed out. I'll go through the standings. We'll go find out. Keep an eye on the road so I don't crash. There we go. Up to 25th. So 33rd to 25th has crashed out of the race in that one incident. A lot of damage. Now the thing with that is all those cars will stay at the side of the track. They won't move for the entire race. So they become a hazard. Um, I've done races today when I was getting the footage for this video where I kept crashing into cars. I'd forget that they were all stuck at the side of the road. Whoops, as I go into the grass, lose all my momentum. I'll let this blue and white car get past and it'll drop me back down to fifth spot. Another car's obviously got involved in, in the accident. Obviously they might have been side by side and hit the other one. So that's another car I don't have to worry about being passed by. Now 1.8 seconds off the leader, 5.2 down to 6.8 behind me is the 6th place car. So it's a 5 seconds gap. Let's see if we can get a run and catch up to these guys ahead. Did lose a bit of ground that last lap when I got onto the grass. Although these guys are slowing themselves up by going side by side. So hopefully we can get back to them. And it looks like we've got some back markers we're catching. So this will give us a chance to get a run on these guys and bolt on by. So that's me up to fifth. A uh, fourth. That's me up to third, I think. And I'm about to get second place, I'm pretty sure. Dive it up the inside. Second, that's the leader right ahead of me. So you can see that kind of day glow red and white. Oh, that's again on the grass, just about to spin out. Oh, just about took out that car. Oh, they almost ended in tears. That almost ended in me crashing. Um, but as I was saying, you can tell that day glow kind of reddish color and the white. So that's those two are clearly meant to be Marlboro paint schemes. Ooh, as I hit the wall, again, if I'd done that in a 60 lap race or a 200 lap race, which are races with damage turned on, I would have blown the tire and would have to make a pit stop. But as you can see right now, I'm all the way, so I'm in third place, I'm losing a bit of ground to the car ahead of me, just not getting good runs on the straight. Looks like fourth place is catching me as you can see in my mirrors. Um, yeah, it's definitely a good run on me, although there's the two Marlborough cars side by side, I'm pretty sure. I oh, know it's a lapper, it's a lapper I just got past. Now. Right now, you might be wondering, why am I playing music in the background? Well, it's old school sounds. The sounds aren't good. Oh, jeez, I just began to run. So I get past him up to second position. Now, as I was saying, you wonder why I don't play music? Well, let's listen to the sound quality. Well, that's obviously interesting sound quality. Hey, it's 1980s technology. There's only so much computing power that could be dedicated to everything. And I'm not even sure they could have put better sound quality in it, even in, even if they wanted to. I mean, we are talking about 1980s. The computer power of the average personal computer was, like the RAM, for example, you're doing pretty well if you're in the megabytes for RAM. I mean, you compare that to now, I'm running 64 gig of mine, I know people are running over 100 gig of RAM. So, that says a lot, it says a lot, and it probably actually makes it just how impressive this game is, considering the computing power back in the day. They really did an amazing job. Anyway, back to the race, and we just started the final lap, we're not going to win it, but we're just going to avoid the other cars to make sure I hang, hold on to second place. Stay off the grass, of course, which I've had a bit of trouble doing in this race. We're going to come home for a solid second place. Only in about another lap worth of fuel, so I did run it a bit fine on the fuel. Again, another realism thing there. The fuel, if you have more fuel in the car, in the car it will go slower. I mean, 1989 isn't adding that sort of realism in. 
you get less fuel in the car, the, the faster you'll go, the less weight. It's pretty impressive. Now I'll jump forward to a little little party piece, a little attention to detail that this game for such an old game had such little bits of fine detail that you wouldn't expect. End of the race, you trundle around, you sl the AI slows down and pulls into the pits. Now that may not seem like that big of a deal, it really isn't, it doesn't really change the game, but it's a little attention to detail that some games even now, some so-called simulators don't even have. That's pretty impressive. Now before I end the video, it'd be remiss of me to not show you what it's like to have a crash in this game. Because it's actually kind of spectacular, and you imagine early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, this would seem pretty epic. And I may also be doing a little bit of the, what every kid does in a racing game, and a lot of adults have done at some point. Let's drive the wrong way into traffic with damage turned on, and see what sort of carnage we can create. There's also maybe a small small uh, method to the madness. Because you have, can have damage turned off for yourself in a 10 lap race, but the damage is turned on for the AI, well you can take out the whole pack and get yourself an easy race win. Just, a, just destroy all the other cars, and then turn around, race to the finish, but I mean, bit of a you've got an easy win. It's interesting trying to avoid all the carnage because all the cars are crashed on the same bit of track as you, as is, as is each other. If you do it all on, say, the front straight, which is my recommendation, it's the easiest place to take them all out. And as you can probably see here, it gives you a wee little Easter egg with some screenies. You've been pushed into victory lane by your team. You're celebrating with your team, drinking the old glass of milk, and then getting interviewed. And probably a little cheeky kiss from the grid girl and interviewed by the, um, the media guy in front of the old Borg Warner trophy. Anyway, that's a bit of a trip down memory lane for me. Game I played way too much as a kid. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did like, if you did enjoy it, please hit the old like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you want me to do more, more of these in the future, more of these retro flashbacks of various racing games. And we'll catch you for the next one. Ciao.